Hello there, it's Austin. So all-in-one brewing systems like the one I've been using recently, the iGulu F1, are a great way to take next steps into brewing processes like temperature control fermentation and kegging without having to commit to purchasing or dedicating the space in your house or apartment to a bunch of different types of equipment all at once. However, there are a couple drawbacks to these sort of systems and one of the main ones is you can't ferment your next beer while you're still enjoying your previous one. So today we're gonna talk about freeing up some brewing space by bottling right out of your tap. So let's get started. The first step in bottling your beer is, well, having some beer to bottle. So the beer that I'll eventually be bottling today is going to start out its life as the Igulu Bavarian Hefeweizen Kit. I've already done a full video on the setup, brewing, fermentation, and dispensing part of the Igulu if you want to check it out here. But to go through it pretty quickly, brewing the kit on the iGulu is pretty much collecting your water. I like to adjust my water since I'm collecting reverse osmosis water. Adding in your hop extract, your yeast, and finally your dry malt extract, then sealing it up and selecting the correct fermentation profile on your machine. 10 to 12 days later, the machine will cold crash your beer and then turn the LED green to signify it's ready to drink. To start bottling out of your tap, the first thing you need is, well, some bottles. You can always buy bottles online, but I like to save all the standard beer bottles that I buy and remove the labels through some combination of scrubbing or soaking in various cleaning solutions. Today I'll be using some oxygen absorbing crown caps, which are pretty inexpensive and I usually buy them to fill out to free shipping whenever I'm ordering some grain. The next thing you need is some 3 8 interior diameter silicone tubing. Mine's trimmed to just over the height of the beer bottle, or right around 9 inches, and you want it to fit pretty snug over the tap that you'll be dispensing from. And of course to secure those crown caps on, you'll need some sort of a bottle capper, and I'll be using this hand Emily style bottle capper. I'll start the actual filling process by soaking the bottle in a bucket of sanitizer. I like dropping it in there and letting it fill up and then it kind of flips up to present itself to you which is pretty neat. But I'll dump the rest of the bottles I'll be filling up in there as well, making sure everything is nice and covered and sanitized. I usually reduce or cut off my flow of CO2 to help the beer flow more gently into the bottle. And if you have a way to purge your bottles with CO2 first, that can help in long-term storage, but definitely not necessary. With our safety bucket installed to catch any overflow, I'll pull the tap a few times to clear out the lines and help reduce foaming. Then with the tubing inserted all the way to the bottom of the bottle, I'll pull the tap and let the beer start to fill the bottle. As the bottle's filling, keep an eye on the difference between the liquid level and the foam level in the bottle because you will need to continue pouring the beer even after the foam has started pouring out of the top. Once you see the beer jump to the top of the lip, then it's time to cut off your tap, pull out your tube, and start the capping process. Foaming should reduce on the next couple bottles that you're filling, especially if you have the CO2 turned off, but depending on the carbonation of the beer, the temperature of the bottles, and a couple different things, you're probably always gonna get some foam coming out. So that's why it's important to keep an eye on where the actual liquid is inside of your bottle. Once the bottle is full and there's still a little bit of foam peeking out of the top, we'll install our sanitized cap onto the capper and put the cap on the bottle. This can be a little tricky depending on what kind of capper you have, but just make sure you're pushing down firmly and evenly on both sides. And always good practice to give a look and listen around the seam of your crown cap to make sure you're not having any liquid or gases leaking out. If you're bottling out of the iGulu and you don't have a silicone tube sitting around, it is possible to bottle directly out of the liquid outline, although it is kind of finicky and I probably wouldn't recommend doing this. Between the controls on the hose clamp and the length of the liquid outline in general, it's just kind of tricky to get right without kind of a mess that ends up spilling back into your keg. But it is possible to do if you really need to and you don't mind wasting a good bit of beer. In fact, it is important to note, if you're filling a bottle and you make a foamy mess out of it like I did here, that's okay, you can still cap on top of that foam and enjoy a mostly full and completely drinkable beer at the end of the day. But moving back to our less disastrous full and capped bottles of beer, the last step in the bottling process is writing down the name and designation of your beer on the cap, unless you're into fridge surprises. You can also print out a label if you have a nice label printer lying around, and putting it somewhere cold for storage. Usually I trust these sort of tap bottled beers for a couple of weeks depending on the style. Maltier styles are more oxidation resistant, and I've left them for a couple of months without noticeable depreciation. Whether you're bottling a couple beers or a growler to take on a camping trip, or you're just trying to free up a little extra space to start brewing that next batch, you can get a decently stable and relatively oxidation resistant bottle right out of the tap. And at that point, well, it's a bottle of beer, so enjoy it how you will. Cheers.